What's up guys? What's going on? So we're in Alawela, I believe. I probably butchered that. Uh, we're just west of San Jose. Last night here, heading back to the airport tomorrow. And this is probably going to be one of the better stops on the trip, especially for you plant geeks. Um, I met Paul Zink's house and he's a collector. He runs a nursery, doing all kinds of neat stuff with breadfruit. This place is, uh, it's got it growing on. Um, probably going to do the hillside today and then tomorrow he's going to be harvesting for market and we'll film that whole process for you guys. So then I'm getting on a plane, got to get back to Florida, see my wife and kid and get back to work here. So no more playtime. Welcome to Finca Madre. This is my uh, durian. It's about seven and a half years old. It flowered, but it was just a, they just fell off. It didn't really fully. Is it seven and a half years old? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, grafted. Uh, my baby. Is that from uh, the man we were talking about? From who? From no, it's from Gary Zills. Okay, actually, Gary. Gary Zills place. Yeah. What's growing on here? This is pretty cool. This is a little ba uh, bamboo lettuce planter. And you want to some, get some greens? Keeping them off the ground so the slugs don't get them and other bugs. Little chico sapote, or do you, uh, do you call them in sapodillas? Yeah. Got some fruit up there too. Cool. Yeah. This is caimito, maybe? Yep, star apple. Nice. Full of flowers right now. Can you see the flowers? Kind of hard. The lighting there. Oh, yeah, they're under there. Cool. Governor's plum over there. It's not really flowering yet. The mandarin. This is all grass about seven years ago. Uh, and we started terracing it out. I don't know if you can really see, but there's terraces going all the way down. So the water stops, slows, and sinks. And uh, the sediment starts to build up. And the soil here, you know, was, was pretty bad. But now it's just, I don't know, you can almost want to eat it. Alive. Yeah, it's, nice. it's pretty quick here. If you plant a lot of nitrogen fixing plants, you can do it. Uh, you can speed up the process. How long you been on the land? Seven, seven and a half years, yeah. Seven and a half years, okay. So there's all the different citrus. Right here is a, a so I got the name of the orange. It's too many citrus. I've got like 45 varieties of citrus. Wow. Like this one, my favorite, as a blake, the caviar lime. I saw pictures of this. Oh, oh wow. You guys have a knife? I haven't had these yet. What? Whoa. Wow. Literally like pop rocks. What? Oh. You guys want to try? Lime? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What? Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> mmm. Oh, Amazing. this thing's loaded too. Australian huh? finger lime. A few different colors. This is kind of a, a pinkish, pinkish uh, lime color. Nice. Wow. Trey, let's check that out. Wow. Oh. What? I know. <laughs> it's delicious. Oh my goodness. Wow. Incredible. Very cool. Mm, I gotta get some trees from this. For sure, yeah. Great, yeah. We got a bunch of grafted trees. Oh yeah. Nice. They, they produced, this one I planted last oh, sure. year. A little bit luck. Really? Yeah. Can we pick another one, Paul? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't realize you didn't get it. <laughs> Mike, you feeling left out over here? <laughs> here you go, man. Do. I Bust it open. This. Is you, maybe you maybe want to break with your teeth. teeth. Oh. Oh boy. Oh my so goodness. Squeeze it and twist. What? <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Oh, wow. These are That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> They're slightly underripe. They could get uh, riper. That's Later. delicious. It's like a little tiny caviar. Imagine that ball. inside, like, sushi. Like, mm. oh. Ceviche. Nice. Mm. <laughs> That's incredible. That was epic. You see those jackfruits popping off over there? You guys must be, must be sick of jackfruit by now. Oh, wow. No, we haven't. <laughs> we've only had one good one since we've really? been here. Yeah, oh, I got a perfectly ripe one. What? Yeah. There's a spineless pehiwaye. If you guys 
So spineless? I, spineless, yeah. I, I, I like to walk around barefoot, and so I I can't plant anything with spines. And so okay. I was going to plant Pehiwai, uh, but I waited until I found this spineless one. And it gets loaded. Right now it's flowering, I think, but it's kind of hard to see. They almost seem to be a little shorter than the other ones, too. They not get quite as tall, or they will eventually? Well, maybe. Okay. One, the one in the center is pretty tall already. Wow. A sapote of the asilo variety. This is one of my favorite uh, kinds of... Uh, this is a dwarf Filipino coconut oh, wow. with 450 milliliters of coconut water. The normal average coconut water is like 300 milliliters. So this one's short, uh, dwarf, and just like, a, it's like the size of a coconut, but it's a coconut water one. That's, they're usually smaller, but. Delicious. Crispy. Whoa. Grafted, graft, jackfruit tree. This is grafted, nice. Yeah. From uh, Gary too? This one is also from Gary, yeah. Nice. What this do you call this one, crispy? Yeah, I think crunchy? It was, I was calling it crunchy. Crispy, crispy something. Uh, crisp, I forgot the name. The yellow what, or orange flesh? This is the orange orange flesh. Oh, nice. Whoa. Yeah. Right over here we have uh, kind of around this pile of bamboo mulch. This is a champa deck. First flowers. But I, just want, I wanted to show you this. Maybe if you get on the other side, you could get a, a better idea of like, I planted both of these artocarpus at the same exact time. And look, at, fruit and this look at that! Look at the deck. vigor on the jackfruit compared to the champa deck. And they're both grafted. They're both grafted, planted wow. exactly. I've had a lot of four and a half years ago. Decks. Wow! Like they're they're tough, man. They're, yeah, this tough. guy's doing well, finally flowering. But I mean, look that guy. He's like third year of harvesting, and that one's a stud. Yeah, like, like five wow. or six years old. Or? Uh, this one's probably four and a half. Yeah. Okay. Almost four five. And a half years yeah, old. five almost. Yeah, March, May. Wow. Wow. Mer meringue right over here. Long gone on the way. Can you tell where my neighbor's yard is? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was. I really, I started, I'm starting to jungle it up in there too. There's some fruit trees I started planting: guanabana, gromichama, mabolo, uh, some cashew, a cashew fruit that's the fruit's like this long and and, and yellow. Nice. It, you just gorilla planting it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, some sacha inchi. Oh really? You guys know Sacha Inchi? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can do a whole nother bit of Sacha Inchi, but uh, there's a fruit. Here's a, a yeah, green you can fruit. Get into it a little bit, please. Uh, Sacha Inchi is like our false peanut uh, of the Incas. It's the one of the most omega three six nine rich foods in the world. I think it's it's like eating salmon. I'm allergic to fish, so I I, I like these a lot. <laughs> get my omegas. Black bamboo. Back in here, this is. You ever had meprang? I haven't had it, I've heard of it. Oh, wow. Remember we found the tree at Ecovia with Steven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It had fruit on it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is a, a, like a apricot mango hybrid kind of thing. Dang. Not, not literal hybrid, just yeah, yeah. flavor wise. Has it flowered yet for it's you? A, in the family of mango. It has not, no. Okay. I want to prune this in my neighbor's bamboo back. Let's zigzag, zigzag down through here. Yeah, we had a green camito mm -hmm. at that guy Francis' house. It was probably the best one I've ever had. Green camito. It was delicious. Yeah, all fatty, right? Huh? Big one. Yeah, yeah. Let's go check out the yellow ones. Sounds great. <laughs> I'm only used, I've only seen red, so. I've seen the yellows, but I haven't had them. Oh! Look what's ripening over here. Yeah. Those are nice side mulberries. Israeli variety. That uh, our friend Itai brought in, great permaculturist here in Costa Rica. Nice. Thanks, Itai. <laughs> Good work, Itai. Can we try one? Oh yeah, get in there. Whoa, whoa! You guys know I geek out on mulberries. Hold on here. <laughs> Woo! This thing's a fatty. Definitely a little bit uh, fatter than the ones we have in Florida. Mmm. Mm. This is from Israel? It's really very Delicious. Fun. You guys try them? Yeah? Really good. Yeah. What do you think? Huh? Try this uh, big fatty mulberry. Mmm. Mm. Deliciosa. Deliciosa. Oh. Very good. Seso vegetal. You got some uh, 
vegetable brain or seso vegetal. I don't know how to, what do you call this? Aki, Aki. the national dish of Jamaica. Tastes like cheese and eggs. It's quite good. Uh, oily like an avocado. You can eat it. Uh, you gotta make sure you, you remove the, sh the shell, which is very poisonous, the seed, and then the inside, where it has that little pink layer. You wanna remove that, and then you got this delicious oily, cheesy egg fruit. So if you want some some eggs in the morning, just climb a tree right next to the house. You guys want to try? Score, yeah. Alright. So here we go. Very cheesy. Yeah. When I get slightly cooked, it gets soft mm. immediately. Yeah. Arise makes like a really interesting mock seafood dish. Like it's pretty good. It's, it's a subtle taste. Like eggs? Yeah. Nice. I'd say close to an egg, yeah. I think the color kind of makes you think that it's like eggs though, you know? Nice, yeah. Cheesy egg. Ooh. Yeah. That is pretty good, actually. This is one of my favorite trees. Just, just come. I pruned it perfectly to be able to come form, up. Yeah. Sit in there and... It's like a seat. Last week it was loaded. I must have picked maybe 40 fruit off of it. <laughs> but, so. And you'll eat, eat all those? Yeah. People at the farmer's market asked to buy them for me, but I... It's hard to sell because I really yeah. just want to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that you're not even worried about not the poisonous property, but more or less you enjoy them so much you want yeah. to keep them. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's, a, that's the idea. Yeah. Wow. No, this is a very sought after fruit. It's one of the the oily, the rich oil, plant based oils there. Nice. So good for you. Stinking toe fruit or guapinol, I prefer to call it. <laughs> it's uh, slightly strong to the to the smell, <laughs> but not to the taste. It's sweet, actually powdery and dry, and usually better eaten in smoothies or water. But for the first few years, I would literally only eat this while I was working, um, skip lunch, and I felt great. <laughs> wow. Lost a few pounds, but. <laughs> Try it. Mind if I do? A little chalky. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's very sweet. I I, uh, I buy it powdered from this uh, herbalist and uh, just put it in smoothies regularly. I really like it a lot, even not eating out of hand like this. It's a, it's a native hardwood here, so a lot of them have been deforested. Uh, they've been fallen. Hmm. Really medicinal. It's got a lot of uh, amazing properties. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that view. It's a Jurassic Park out here. Uh, no, I said it's like Jurassic Park. Uh, this, is a, this is just a protected area of the Rio Grande. What is that big thing? Which one? Oh no, it's not. Uh, yeah. That's a gu uh, Guanacaste. Wow. There are a couple of 
out of size popping up right here. I don't suggest coming down following here. Right next to my uh, arasa, next to this dwarf red fruit, a, a variety of red mafala that I brought in from Hawaii. They're a bit more compact, so as you can see, it's like a, like a round ball compared to the. Yeah. I've imported maybe three or four thousand of these varieties, different varieties in Costa Rica. And one tree can feed a family of four for 75 years, meeting all their carbohydrate needs. So it's kind of like the, the I feel like the missing link in tropical agroforestry to really feed yourself and not have to farm like a old school farmer. It's really aromatic. It's acidic fruit uh, from Brazil, made for juice. You can bust it open if you have. Ooh, yeah. Really Ooh. juicy. <laughs> wow. Ooh, we had it mixed with sugar cane juice. It was Unbelievable. We should have popped some uh, miracle fruit beforehand. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I, I've never tried this one. With no? Fruit. No, I mean, I've oh. tried it. With, I haven't tried it with miracle fruit. It's Should it's dangerously it? good because you start eating I know, too many. I bet, yeah. And then you, you can burn your mouth a little bit because it's very acidic. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Super oh. acid, but like, it's interesting. It's so juicy and like, yeah, you just couldn't eat it much out of hand. But juice with like a sweet fruit, pineapple juice or like, Sugar cane juice, it's incredible. It's like Mike? sour pumpkin. Mike, you ready for this? Tell me what you discover. It's like a sour pumpkin. Cameraman wants some. Oh, oh yeah. You're gonna share it with this guy? I get to try stuff too, you see? Mmm. The sour. Mmm, custardy goodness. Mmm. Yeah. So this was, uh, you can kind of see, I, I don't like to cut everything at once. I would just kind of cut the, the, the taco tall here, the new growth, and then start reforesting it in patches. So I did that a few years ago, and then recently, just two weeks ago, we cleared this part of all the weeds. None of the trees, just the just the weedy plants. And uh, this year we're gonna probably plant maybe a few hundred. I want to plant at least a hundred different varieties of coffee, maybe wow. one or two of each. And uh, I have a little collection going here of coffee. The lying sat. This guy's going getting up tall. So uh, the let's come from this spring, right? I mean this uh, waterfall right here. I was all gravity fed. I only need to use it six months a year, so. You mean dry season? Yeah. Yeah. So you do irrigate a little bit during dry? Oh yeah. Okay. Otherwise everything would be dry as and wow. dead looking here. The only way to keep it keep it alive. Oh, this is uh, very exciting. My first avocados popping off. Might be a little backlit for you to see there, but. The seedling. Yeah. Nice. Come on under. Some different citrus going on down here. Planted a bunch of salak going that way. Uh, this place is more like a collection. Uh, three varieties, I mean three of each variety. I can find a lot of no of all the different uh, oh, really? tropical fruits. What are you up to in your collection? Uh, of edible plants or fruit trees? Both. Four hundred thirty. Wow. Not sure if this is the horco or a, a cha cha. I got to be honest. I, I collect a lot of garcinias, yeah. different mangosteen you know, relatives, and they kind of get mixed up. <laughs> <Easy too. laughs> a cha chairo or horco or. Not sure, but it doesn't really matter because it'll produce some fruit soon and we get to eat this. Yeah, nice. Find out. Opa! So now going down a bit farther, you see a different climate. This is part of the advantages of having a, a inclined farm is that you can plant things at the top, plant things at the bottom, and you'll see what is the difference. Down here it's a bit more humid, a little bit hotter. So the mangosteens do better, the durians do better. 
for the top. Some of the more subtropical plants do better. Wow, I just felt that temperature change. Right? You feel it? Yeah, yeah. It's just going down just right here. This is like the level. Wow. Talk about microclimates here. Yeah. Huh? You're really taking advantage of that. Yeah, it, we're right about. Uh, sorry, we'll have to do some feet. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure of feet anymore. Meters? It's about six, 750 meters above sea level, the farm. That's the limit for where Ian's mangosteens grow. 500 meters is the ideal, but... Uh, yeah, and so things that grow in the colder climate, subtropical weather grows well here, and then things grow in, in the deep tropics grow well here. Breadfruits and mangosteens and all that good stuff. So it's like a good mix and uh, it's fresh climate. 72 degrees almost all year round, average, you know, gets up to the 80s and then 60s at night. Bunch of cacao, acerola, a petal eye. This made it through the dry season. Oh, looking, nice. all, looking pretty good, actually. You ever had petal eye? Looks like not. a big rambutan, hairy, red, furry, but then you break it up, it's structured like a jackfruit, but little marshmallow structure like fruits, and they're juicy and marshmallow. Oh. That sounds ridiculous. Yeah. That's this beautiful tree right here. That's a, behind that, a spineless pehuayi right to your right. Another one, really? Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. It's starting to uh, flower and fruit right in the middle there. Uh, cool. Some cacao, mango variety over there, ma ma mabolo, uh, chocolate pudding fruit, macadamia, abu, guadamana. This is one of my favorite little spots down, down here. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, fo so I focus definitely first on all the plants and then the structure, uh, the infrastructure of the farm is was last. Yeah, yeah, last, huh? yeah I've been, I was living somewhere else nearby and was able to plant this place out a lot sooner. The Miracle Fruit is just, just dripping. That thing's an overachiever, huh? Yeah. Wow. Because it kind of likes the stress of the summertime. You can see the yellowing of the leaves really happy to have those first rains that we just had. Changes. You must have done a, a bit on Miracle Fruit. Everyone watching your channel has got to know what Miracle Fruit is. Yeah, <laughs> if not, it. maybe you got a link up there. <laughs> the really popular thing for us is the cancer properties now. Mm -hmm. the cancer patients are using them because they can't taste anything after radiation. Wow. Um, and then like, you know, yuppies. Mm -hmm. in New York, using yep. them for flavor tripping parties, you know? Paris and Tokyo, I yeah, heard yeah, about yeah, those yeah. parties. Before it gets dark, let's check out this waterfall. Yeah. This is like literally right on your land. Yep. Wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> what is that, a, a homemade hammock? Yeah, this is, this is the, uh, the really lazy man's hammock. Like really <laughs> lazy, you know, you just gotta... Oh. Uh, see what I can... I have fallen asleep in here before. <laughs> What kind of vine is this? That's a good question. Okay. Not sure. A good one. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't like the vine, you got the thinking chair. Alright. You got some thinking done. Oh hey, look at the waterfall. Oh hey. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my. Kupawasu. Going into the forest here. <laughs> this is sick, Paul. Oh, OMG. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, it's hard to believe you're only half an hour or 20 minutes from the airport. Yeah, I think we could get off the plane and, and be in a food forest in 20 minutes. Can you tell me, anyone got some, uh, some mushroom? The mushroom geeks on on your on your show. Yeah. Help me. I'll be identify this. Reishi. What is this?
a little bit of natural spring here. I want to say it's thermal. It's slightly warm though. It's not too cold. And delicious. You can drink it. Wow. Kind of visually appealing here. Oh wow. Pickle fruit. Kind of, it's a Averroa uh, Bilimbi. Wow. Tastes sour like a star fruit. It's like a, like a green star fruit. Huh. Quite crunchy. You can <laughs> ferment them. I'm sure you've seen. Mm. Sarah Marie's been inventing some good fermented things out of this. New oh my Marie's god. Doing these things, huh? Look at that. Oh, they're just overachievers, huh? Yeah. Wow. You can just. Are you able to sell this one at the market? Yeah. Okay, nice. This one's pretty good. I should probably harvest a bunch tomorrow. Then bring a bag with me, which was a okay. uh, party foul. <laughs> nice. The wax shampoo. Chocolate pudding fruit. Where's the wax shampoo? This guy right here. Nice. I started flowering. Got, got some small fruits right here flowering. Gotta come back, see what's ripening. Yeah. Now, I don't think you can smell this through the camera, but. Scratch and sniff. Wait, what you got? What you got? Mmm. What do you think? Just allspice? Yeah. Nice. Mmm. Oh, I wanted to check with you if allspice has any flowers. Any flowers. Nice. I just recently saw one flowered. This was flowering a little while ago. Chocolate pudding fruit or black sapote. Nice. Well, I see some where their flowers were. Yeah. This is the little food forest down here. This is getting jungled in, huh? Yeah. Nice. It's kind of you. I don't like to fight against the plants. It's kind of more you put things in action. And you step back and watch and see what happens and maybe adjust a couple things here, cut a vine there, get rid of some leaf cutters over there, but mostly you let, you kind of just let things take its course. Really producing. Was this from Gary? Yeah, okay. one of Gary's varieties that he that he invented, I think. He's, Is this one for Costa Rica? Mm, this looks better here. Or? Not sure. I'm not, I can nice. compare to what Florida got going on. My experience of growing in the States is very minimal. It's mostly tropical Costa Rica. Panama, Nicaragua. Sweet. This is a Asilo Sapote variety. It's like sweet potato on a tree. One of my faves. Wow. First, first fr uh, fruit. They take up to 24 months from flowering to harvest. It's just like a mamey then. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a, it's a mamey Sapote. Oh, okay, okay, it is. All right. Yeah. They take a while. You gotta have patience for this one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We've got, pl got it planted down here. I can come back every once in a while. I don't have to be past here every day, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up guys? Wow, that Paul Zink tour. This place is something else. We uh, we got some more videos for you guys, so hold tight. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, most importantly, pound dirt.